Here's our next problem. Here's the overall vector delta r. But you can see I'm not telling you delta r. I'm only telling you the y component, which is negative 7, and this angle, which is 40 degrees. And as you can see from the question mark, your job is to figure out what delta r is. Please pause the video and give that a shot. First thing you should have done is write down the positive direction. And after you do that, you can see why this was called negative 7. Uh, because down is the positive direction, but this component is up in the negative direction. Now let's finish off the right triangle here. And draw an arrow on the x component, pointing to the right, since the overall vector is right. And here's delta x. We're not really going to use delta x to solve the problem, but it's always good to label all the sides. Uh, let's see, I should already have put an asterisk here to show this was a given, and an asterisk here to show that this is the angle that we're focusing on. And we can label our hypotenuse, and our adjacent side, and our opposite side. Remember, if these problems are giving you any difficulty, write more stuff down. Write down more of the labels and the systematic notation that we've been talking about. I think now we have to form a plan as to which trig function we're going to use. This is another problem where we're given one side and one angle. We've been given one side and one angle, and we know we solve these types of problems using trig functions. Uh, now, um, let's see. Well, we've been given the opposite side. So clearly we want a trig function that deals with the opposite side. And the question is about the hypotenuse. So it looks like we need a trig function that deals with the hypotenuse. It would not be a good decision to use a trig function that deals with the adjacent side, because we were not given the adjacent side, and the question was not about the adjacent side. So what's the point of focusing on that? Instead, we need to focus on the opposite side, which has a number we were given, and the hypotenuse, which has the question mark. Well, so, the sine deals with the opposite and the hypotenuse. Sine of 40 equals opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going back to the Sokotoa definition. Now I can cross multiply. 1 times the opposite side is the opposite side. And multiplying diagonally the other way, we get the hypotenuse times the sine of 40. Now what should we plug in for the opposite side? Well, I hope you didn't plug in negative 7. Because remember that the opposite side is really the length of the opposite side. We're dealing with geometry, trigonometry here. Everything is lengths. Everything is positive. So you should just plug in 7, not negative 7. Remember that we're plugging in the magnitude of this component. We're not plugging in the entire sine component. And then our hypotenuse would be delta r times sine 40. Well, we've got to get the delta r by itself. And the way to do that is by getting the sine 40 out of here. Well, how is the sine 40 attached to the delta r? It's attached by multiplication. So the way to get rid of it is to do the opposite, which is division. So we have to divide both sides by sine 40. We do not take any inverse signs here. If you try to take the inverse sign of the whole right-hand side, you get a mess. Um, we uh, just use division, because the sign here is connected by multiplication to delta r. And now we have a calculation we can calculate in one step on our calculator. 7 divided by sine 40. 10.9. Now remember, this is the overall vector we're talking about here. So there's no question of putting a sign in. The overall vector never has a sign. So this is just a magnitude. We can call this 10.9. We already know the direction of the overall vector is 40 degrees. You don't, uh, the way you indicate the direction of the overall vector is just with the angle, not with the sign. So here we have 10.9. Since this is the overall vector, it doesn't really matter whether you call this delta r or delta r with a dot. Um, you can use the same symbol uh, to mean uh, for both, both of those symbols for magnitudes here because there is no sign to overall vector. All right, well, this was another example where you were given one of the components and you had to find the overall vector. Remember that usually you're given the overall vector and you have to find the components. Uh, but 
every once in a while you might be given one of the components and you have to find the overall vector. Uh, it's really the same type of trigonometry problem because they're both problems where you're given one side and one angle. So hopefully neither of those will give you too much trouble. We saw here, though, that we don't use the negative 7. When we're working with the trig functions, we're working with lengths, which are positive. 